Hi, brothers and sisters. This is Mary Hernandez with Genesis Kingdom. Um, happy Christmas Eve. May God bless you and bring you a lot of joy and healing in your family. Um, start an amazing year. We have everything to celebrate for and be blessed. And they know that our Father Jehovah and our King Jesus is with us. He's with us every day. And prayer, prayer, prayer is very important. So today's title I picked is actually um, the mission of our purpose um, from our Father Jehovah has always been his children and also the world. So his mission and his purpose became my purpose for you. And I took that job very seriously. I took that calling, that high calling that he gave me. And I took, I took it and I accepted that revelation by faith at whatever cost because he loved you. And that's the reason why I'm still going and I don't stop. So I pray, Father God, that this message, um, that I'm about to send to your children all over the world, um, that it, that it receives you in your heart and soul and it impacts you and that you take it as as a lesson and and what I'm preaching to you and grow with it and grow with it and pray pray with your family pray every day um if you at work 15 minutes 20 minutes even a half hour lunch 15 minutes lunch do that um your husband's at work your wife's at work hey you pray you work with each other talk to your children you know tomorrow's going to be our king jesus um day that we've been celebrating for centuries um where we were raised it's a very special day um and I always share this story with me because um I told you I was raised with my mom um which is my grandmother um and since I was a little girl she always rooted our father Jehovah and King Jesus since we were little and I remember at that time they had some beautiful dolls they had some beautiful dolls that, that you wind from the back and they walk and they talk. And I remember putting that in the Christmas list, you know. And I remember when we got um, our presents, you know, it was a, it was tall, you know. So I was all like, yes, we got our doll, you know. And I remember opening, opening it and taking it out of the box. And it was that huge doll. And I remember grabbing the doll and being back there looking for the little wine thing. And it didn't whine. It was kind of like a knockoff, you know? And I remember like being sad and being upset because I said, it doesn't talk. It doesn't talk. It doesn't walk. You know, I was like really sad. And even as a young little girl that was crying for that little doll, you know, my mama told me, you know, Miha, be thankful that we even had a doll to give you. She said, it's about Jesus' birthday and we celebrate his birthday, you know, and that's just a gift that we're given to you. But the gift is him, you know, and I remember being over it that quick, being over it that quick. Because, I mean, they rooted him in me since I was a little girl, you know, the Ten Commandments since I was a little girl. You know, and just know that don't feel sad if you're alone or if you're, it's a couple together or if it's a whole family together. Embrace that because some people don't have that moment. Some people don't have a chance to even sit here alone. And we're not alone. Our Father Jehovah is with us. He's in us. But just know that that's the most wonderful gift that there is out there. Is that we still have life and we have life because he didn't fail us. And we haven't failed him because we continue praying and we continue believing. Believing that all this chaos that's going on in the world, that we're going to see the goodness of everything. That it might seem so dramatic and it might seem like a lot. But there is a light in the end of the tunnel and the light is here. And it's in me and it's in you. And it's him. He's the light of the world. You know, and last year I was waiting for that star. I was waiting for that miracle. And I said, what am I doing? He already gave it to me when he, when he gave me a high calling. And that is you guys, you know, 
His mission became my mission and I took it and I ran with it. Even when I didn't know, I didn't know what was going to be next. I didn't know if I was going to live for that day, but I knew I put my trust and everything in his hands and he seen me through it, through the good and the bad. But I know the good and the bad was an awakening for the whole world, you know, through his children. So, you know, that's why prayer is very important, but just know and embrace you know what you do have and then you see the chaos that's going on out there you pray for them you pray for them don't give up on praying you know we have to pray for our enemies we have to pray if we pray for the people we love and god says hey even people that have done us wrong we did god wrong we sinned against him and he forgave us so what makes us think that we're any better you know did it hurt yes it did yes it did but there was a purpose behind the pain and he'll give you that revelation as you continue walking in this journey with him, with the light, our father, Jehovah and King Jesus. So embrace every moment that we have and embrace it with your family, rather it's with yourself. Just know that you're by your, you're not by yourself. He's with you, but just know there's a lot of them that can say that, you know, let's not take for granted what we do have, you know, and embrace everything that we have in him. And that is life. You know, that we're still breathing, that we still went on this next mi mission with him, this next step, this heavenly, I call them heavenly levels, <laughs> you know, heavenly levels. And it's another one that we have to conquer and we have to keep fighting. We never stop fighting. And that fight, um, it's just like it says, I said to the nobles and I said to the leaders and I said to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember our Lord, our God, Jehovah is with you, you know. Fight for your brethren, fight for your sons, fight for your wives, fight for your daughters. I go, so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and I wept and I mourned for days and I fasted and I prayed to the Lord, the God of heaven. I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great, awesome God, you who keep your covenant with mercy to those that love you and observe you and keep your commandments. Let that prayer sink in. Every prayer will speak to you in your journey with the walk of God. And believe me, Demons get scared and they flee. Once you know who you are and you know you're walking right with God and that you have repented from sin, he is with you. You believe, even if it's mustard seed, imagine what huge faith does. And I'm not saying that we did not lose things in this world because I lost my cousin, you know, in this journey. But, you know, I'm going to have a time to mourn her. I'm going to have a time to go and visit her at the cemetery. You know, I'm going to have a free pass in heaven. <laughs> so we're going to meet again. You know what I'm saying? And I just know it's heaven on earth. And how do you fight evil? You fight it with prayer. Prayer is everything. Prayer is important. Never get off of it. So um, I'm going to start off with Matthew 10. And this is the mission that he sent his disciples in, and it has all 12 disciples. But I went down to Bible verse 5. And it starts off with Jesus not only telling his disciples, but also me and also you. And this journey is also that you're walking with God. And this is very important, right? It says, the 12 that Jesus sent forth the com to command them, saying, go into thy way of the Gentiles and into the city of the Samaritans. Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather as lost sheep of the house. It says of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, rise the dead, cast out devils, freely, and you have received freely give. Meaning, like if somebody tries to offer, I know if you've seen it on The Chosen, when Peter, um, when a, a beggar's out there and the beggar says, you know, I think he said, son of man or Peter, I don't remember exactly how it went. But Peter tells him, he said, silver and gold I don't have, but in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. You know, and he rose up and he walked and, you know, and you understand that whole powerful statement was I might not have uh, you know gold and and silver to offer you but I have the gift of God that is in me and this is it 
right here to pray over you, to continue guiding you in this journey with him and for you not to give up. Yes, time gets hard and yes, we discourage. But what is going to happen to this world is so much bigger than what the enemy is destroying. And this is just a wake up call like it was to me just as much as it was to you. And I know you see it. And that's why he's exposing the darkness. So you could know that it wasn't as good as everything that every everybody thought. Even our husbands, even our the wives that were out there, even our own. The world was living like that. That the grass wasn't as green as you thought. Something that was so good out there, you thought it was. It wasn't. So this is the wake up call. And it's not to put you down, not to put me down, but it was a wake up call to walk away from that world that was pure darkness, darkness. And we were blinded by it. You know, it says nor scrim for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, neither yet stives for workmen is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city, town you shall enter, inquire who is worthy and abide until you go thence. When he came into the house, he saluted it. And the house be worthy. Let your peace come upon it and be worthy and let your peace return to you. Whosoever shall not receive you, not hear your words. When you depart out of the house of the city, he said, shake off the dust of your feet. That's testimony against them, you know, wherever he had me as it's going, you know, as I'm, I'm preaching, as I'm, I'm letting you know what God is saying for me to pray over you, you know, just know that you did what, what he asked you to do, you know, what he had asked me to do, what he had asked his disciples to do. But verily I say unto you, it should be more tolerable of a land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth a ship in the midst of the of the wolves. It says, Be ye therefore wise serpents, harmful as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you up in council, and they will scourge you in their synagogue. And you shall be brought before the governors and the kings for my sake, for testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they delivered you up, take no not. No, it says, Take no thought. In how you shall speak. And this is what he's saying. You know how a lot of people say, oh, they're not qualified. Nah, 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 nah. He's, this is his speech to you and to me. And this is what he's saying. When you, del this is when, but when they deliver you up, take no thought. It says on how or what you shall speak. For it shall be given to you the same hour that you shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up a brother to death. And the father and the child and the children will rise up against the parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated all over man for my name's sake. But he endureth in the end, he shall be saved. But when you are prosecuted in the city, flee ye to another for verily I say unto you, they shall have not gone over the cities of Israel until the son of, man, the son of man has come. The disciple is not above the master, neither is the servant upon his Lord. Is it, is it enough for the disciples to be as his master, his servant, his Lord? For he has called the master of Belzebub. It says, how much more shall they call them in his household? Fear then that therefore that there is nothing covered, that they shall not be revealed and hid, and it shall not be known. But I'll tell you in the darkness, and speak ye light, in which ye hear, and the year that ye shall preach upon the housetops, to fear not of them which kill, but the body that are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him that is able to destroy both the soul and body in hell. So he's saying, why do you fear them? Don't fear them. They could kill you in the flesh. But fear God, our Father Jehovah, our King Jesus, because he could destroy both the soul and body in hell. In hell. It says, aren't two sparrows sold are furthering? Our one it says, and one of them shall not fall on the ground, but without your father. But very, he says, very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, for you are more valuable than sparrows. 
Whosoever therefore shall confess before men, him I will confess also, but before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him and I will deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I come upon to send peace on earth, that I came not to send peace but a sword. I have not come to set a man of variance against his father, but the daughter against her mother, the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. For the man's fool, they shall be his own household. He that loveth the father and the mother, they shall not be worthy of me, but loveth his son and mother more than, more than me is not worthy of me. And what does that mean? I know I shared a little bit of the story uh, and what he's trying to say, because somebody reads it for the first time. And they think, gosh, that's harsh. But as I have learned the Bible and my walk with my father, he prepared me for this battle way before. I literally walked through hell. I literally was going into spiritual warfare when I was a young girl all the way until now. And I understand the hell that I went through before I walked through hell was to prepare me for this battle. But I had to learn what it meant to be chosen because I didn't know. I knew I had gifts. I had beautiful gifts. But I never abused my gifts. Do you see how ironic how God knows his children? Because I, I could have used my gifts, you know. And if I had an evil heart, I could have sat there and, and cursed somebody, you know. But I never did. You know what I'm saying? I knew I had it, so I watched what I said in this journey. I learned also to keep my mouth shut and watch what I say. So I said, Father, work with me because I know my words are powerful. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to sin against him. Now, as far as what that Bible verse means, and there's more to it, but I'm not reading all of it. I'm going to go back to the subject that I was um, telling you about. Um, he, um, remember I told you the story about how my daughter got demon possessed and God woke me up saying, here he comes. And then just at the sight of my father in me, he left her, you know, he saved my daughter. And I took this job and this journey because I wouldn't have her if it wasn't for him. You know, and she's a living testimony up until now. She said, there ain't nobody that could tell me that it ain't real because she knew she got demon possessed. But God delivered her. My father Jehovah did in me, you know, and that's what it means. If you love your man, if you love your children more than me, then you're missing the whole concept. That's why I don't put my children. I don't put them. I definitely don't put a man before my father, but I definitely don't put my children either before my father, because I know without him, our father Jehovah, I wouldn't have them. So I thank him every day for my children. Every day I said, I thank you, father for my children that he maintained them. When I had every demon pocket that they had in their pocket sent at me, right back at you. He gave me the victory. He guided them and he, he took care of them for me in this journey, you know, and that's basically what he's trying to tell you. Now I go to Psalms one through 41. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step, who does not walk in steps with the wicked or stands in the way of the sinners take or seek or in company of the mockers. But those that delight in the law of the Lord, the Ten Commandments, and those who meditate on the law day and night, the person is like a tree planted by the stream's water in which yields the fruit of the season and whose leaf does not wither. But whatever they prosper, they not so do wicked. This is, it's like a shaft, like the wind that blows away. This is therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor the sinners in the, in the assembly of the righteous for the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Who's the nations that conspire against the people to plot vain? The kings of the earth rise up the rulers that band together against the Lord and against the Lord anointed. And this is where the world, other nations came against us, came against me as a chosen vessel came against the chosen and they pivot even the chosen ones to turn against each other. And it says that they did it because they knew that. They knew that once the truth and everything comes out, 
that they that they lose dominion over it. The more people we continue saving, the Father's already going to do it. You're going to be either in the in the in the light, or you're going to be perish in the darkness in the lake of fire. And that's the truth. We're at the end times. I can't sh- sugarcoat it for you. And you see, and you continue seeing the signs and wonders of what's really going on in this world. Understand, and this is just an eye opener. And that's how they went against you. That's how they went against us. That's how they turned us even against each other. You know, put our father knew our heart. And this is what the nations to nations conspired. It says, why do the nations conspire with the people and plot in the vein? The kings of the earth rise up. The rulers band together against the Lord, against his anointed, saying, let us break their chains and let us throw their shackles. For one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scuffs at them. He rebukes them in the anger and terrifies them in this wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree, he said to me. You are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possessions. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son or he will be angry or your ways and lead to your destructions. For he is the wrath that could flare up in a moment. Blessed are those that take refuge in him. That means you sit there and you stay anchored to the Father Jehovah. I do. I say you're the anchor of my heart and my soul. And I just don't pray for me and mine. I pray for all of you, each and one of you, the people that are in darkness to come. And then, um, and this is all Psalms. I'm in Psalms 3 now. You know, the Lord, how many are my foods? How many rise up against me? Many are saying, for God will not deliver him. But your Lord is the shield around me. My glory, one who lifts me up in the high. I call out to the Lord and he answered me. His holy mountains. I lie down and sleep. I wake up again because the Lord has sustained me. That I will not fear 10,000. And a Zile on one on every side. He said, 10,000 on one side, 10,000 on the other. He said, but arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies and my jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked in the name of Jesus. For the Lord comes to deliverance. May you have the blessing be on your people. You know, the Bible speaks to you a lot, a lot. And if you don't understand, stay with one until you get it. To be honest with you, I started first with Psalms. I was at Psalms day and night, day and night, day and night. <laughs> Believe it or not. Um, but I, I, I was scared. I was scared to go to the other one and not understand it. You know, I was scared to fail in my calling. I was scared to let you down because he chose me for a big mission and that was you. You know, so that means you're going to be mocked. He said, he knew that. Those ones that are mocking, oh, you're this, you're not good enough, you're that. Oh, she's the devil. Oh, she's evil. Oh, she's this. She don't know what she's doing. She don't know what she's saying. She's crazy. He said, that is going to happen. He said, but they're doing that because you're being different. And different is good. Because the Most High God approved me and that was all the approval I needed. I didn't need to see it, how the world seen it. Because you see the world leaders that are at work, and now that they've been, where has has nothing but chaos in this world. Everything that they've been doing, as, as God c- continues unveiling it, you will see it. You know? And just know that He loves you, and He hasn't given up on either one of you, neither on me. And I continue my walk with them and continue... Um, I continue slaying giants in the name of Jesus. Now, um, the other little mini title in between this, this is some Bible verses that kind of speak about hanging out with circumcised and not circumcised people. Circumcised is people that, um, that are shunning evil and living um, circumcised that are, they're circumcised. They already surrender ourselves to our Father Jehovah. We're walking in the Ten Commandments. 
we're not sinning in things in the world. Um, and of course, the uncircumcised are the ones that are still in sin. They're still unclean, you know. And this is what the whole topic was about. Um, I'm gonna. It says I'm gonna write the. I'm gonna actually copy paste the whole of the, the ones that I got. And really, it says hanging around with non Christians, you know, or Christians, you know, the ones that are Christians and one non Christians, uncircumcised, circumcised, Philistines, <laughs> hypocrites, you know, the ones that are whitewashed too. And that's a whole different ball game. Those are people that are in high places, heavenly places. They call it. Um, it speaks, it says, do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer him. Understand, and it's not that God is putting them down. Those are people that decide to want to walk that way. But if you're still hanging out with them, you could pray for them, but not hang out with them because it gets easy. You kind of almost get dragged down back. He's pulling you. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, well, let's go and hang out. You know, we're not going to drink. Next thing you know, you're out there and two hours, three hours. You're like, you know what? Let me just do one. And boom, you fall back into it. Or you say, hey, no, I don't want to go out. Come on. I got some beautiful girls. There's two of them. Or if it's a girl, a spouse, a woman spouse. Hey, I got two dudes that are hanging out with me. Because you'll get friends that are like that. You know, and they'll be like, hey, come on. You know, you're not going to cheat. It's okay. Let's just go hang out. Boom. What happens? Drink drugs, all that, boom, is, is that over, is that easy, you know, so those are the people that are not ready to let go of that lifestyle, that's what it means, separate yourself from them, you know, and it says, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but whoever has companions of fools will suffer, do not be unequal yoked of, with unbelievers, for they, what, what partnership, has righteousness with the lawness and the lawness mean that they're still living with the things of the world, the law. And then there's Moses law, which is righteousness. What fellowship has the light with darkness? There isn't any, we're not light. And if you're walking right, then you're being pointed at, you're being talked about. Why? I, I honestly believe, and I'm going to tell you this because my ex-husband told me that one time, you know, he called me boring because I didn't want to drink and I didn't want to drug with him. You know, he's, I was born and I started partying with him because I wanted to be, I wanted to be everything that he liked. You know, I, I thought I wasn't good enough for him, you know? So I wanted to become that wife that, you know, okay, well, I like drinking, don't get me wrong, but you know, I also like to sleep, you know, and he would get mad. Well, you leave me alone drinking, you know, and it was always something. And this is testimony. So then I started doing what he wanted me to do. And then when I finally stopped, I said, dude, I'm, I, this is not me. I'm tired of this life. This is not me. I can't do this. He walked away. He walked away. Just, we seen him walking. I looked out that window, me and the kids, you know, and that was it. All I seen was the back of him walking away with the backpack. And he was gone. You know? And just know that if you're different, if somebody's not going to love you for who you are, they're not worth it. And sometimes people might say, oh, you're alone. Oh, you're not with this man. But then some people are with men and they're sharing them and they're, they're settling for whatever it is, but you have to have respect and morals and values. Morals and values starts within you. Why are you going to settle to be wife one, two, three, four? Oh, because you're married with the king or oh, because you're married with somebody that has money or oh, because somebody that has drugs that all that ends at one time and point. At one time, they get tired of that life, or sometimes they might find somebody else and replace you too, replace you your, with your wife, replace you with the husband. Then what do you do? What do you have to fall back on? You know? It's just having respect and morals starts within you and how you see things and how you see the world. You know? It's okay to be different. It's okay to be called misfit. It's okay to say you're boring. <laughs> You know, it says James 4, 4, you adulterous people, 
Don't you know that friendship within the world of the enmity with God is an enmity with God? But therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God.